enjoy. I just want to give a quick thanks to the Tier 5 channel members and patrons. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Sergeant Puma, Cat Crab Lobster, and Duck Machine. Thank you very much for the support. It is much appreciated. Story number one. Pain Thresholds. I've heard of those. Written by Warp Mind. I first met the human, Kenneth, when he wandered into my clinic on a space station, requesting I help him procure some medication. I was skeptical, as the compound he asked for was black as a narcotic for 17 species, and a highly lethal and addictive one at that. We sat down to discuss the drug for some time, and he consented to a full examination to gauge his need for it. He admitted to taking doses well in excess of normal prescription, owing to having built up a resistance to it, as well as chronic pains. The bioscan was terrifying, really. Significant wear and tear on most of the joints, including the entirety of his spinal column. Virtually his entire nervous system being on fire with damage signals from all over, and generally a state of being I would not have expected to permit mobility at all. Yeah, Doc, I know. I've been hauling cargo on and off ships in all sorts of gravities, all sorts of climates. It's worn me down early, but it's what I can do for a living. The pearls, well, they make me able to do the job as well. I looked at him in mild disbelief. You do realize that just being pain-free only increases the risk of further injury, right? And in ways you might not even notice before it's too late. He grinned at me. Hell, Doc, I'm used to pain. I think the last time I didn't feel any pain was maybe 15 years back. I accidentally took a double dose. <sighs> I only take enough to keep the pain at a manageable level, so I can tell if there's a change. Just enough to be able to work and sleep. Our discussion went on for a bit, and I eventually agreed to provide a small supply, on condition that I keep him under observation for the duration of his provided medication. I'd been monitoring Kenneth's condition for a week, being continuously terrified at what sort of monstrous death world could have spawned such a physiology. When the attack hit, there must have been a security leak, as most of the station's forces were out on a pirate hunting operation, precisely when the pirates had arrived and boarded us. I still don't know how they found out, whether it was a betrayal or a well-placed spy, or what but I was captured and ordered to make sure the captives remained alive for, uh, questioning. The bastards used crude torture on the prisoners to extract any secrets they could, and Gannath was what they saw as the prime opportunity to gain information about his home world's defenses. Earth was still something of a mystery at the time. We only knew of it as a death world with several biomes, each producing a multitude of narcotics and poisons. Of course, the pirates wanted that. Kenneth winked at me as he was stretched out for the flogging and questioning, whispering so the captors didn't hear. Best make it five, just to keep me conscious. The torturer waited for me to give Kenneth his life-preserving medication and close his wounds before the next round of flogging. Kenneth cried out in pain a few times before the drug kicked in, then just flinched a little with each strike. The torturer really didn't like that. He accused me of giving Kenneth drugs to make him ignore the pain. He ordered me to stop that and just seal his wounds after every interrogation instead. That didn't work as planned. The next day, Kenneth's bias scan showed that he was almost unconscious from pain before the torturer could even raise his weapon. He was already so far gone. He didn't even react to having his back laid open, let alone any questions the torturer had for him. The day after that, the pirates brought in a telepath to rip the answers from Kenneth's mind. The telepath stood for maybe five seconds, then keeled over, stone dead. A quick examination showed he suffered a massive aneurysm from his sheer pain. After that, they let me give Kenneth his medication again, so that they could keep questioning him. It took another three days before the security forces returned and managed to retake the station, and the pirates tried to execute several of us as no longer useful hostages. Turned out Kenneth had other ideas about that. Despite his injuries, he jumped to his feet, blocked the shot from the electro pistol aimed at me, before reaching out and just, uh, breaking the pirate's carapace in half. 
never even complained about the pain. He just strode forward like some indomitable juggernaut, helping herd our recent captors towards the incoming marines. Kenneth remained my patient for another 16 years. I kept monitoring and supplying him with medication, of course. We never really discussed the events of the pirate attack. The injuries didn't bother him much in the big picture, and there wasn't any lasting damage to speak of anyway. Over the years, any time I asked him about his pain, he answered, Meh, I'm used to it. All but five times when he admitted he wanted to just lie down and die to get it over with. I never found any discernible difference in his bioscans on those days, so I can only guess that it was mental fatigue that triggered his bad days. In the end, his death was accidental, and unrelated to his suffering. He was standing in the wrong place at the wrong time when a repulsor lift failed, dropping a five-ton cargo container on him. Nothing to be done, but at least it was quick. His funeral was quite a fair, not many attendees. I was there out of a sense of obligation, and perhaps wore some personal closure that I've not fully processed a good century later. But from my time as a xenophysician encountering most of funds of the universe, humans are the only species I have found who respond to pain with, eh, I'm used to it. End of story. Story number two. Please explain, written by Echoing Cascade. Shimogoth was a Shogoth, a monstrous race of tentacled mouths who can only be described as extremely kind and with childlike curiosity. Shimogoth was sitting in the captain's table at the ship's mess hall. He had recently joined the crew of the Inquiry 5883, a long-range recon scout, as its medical officer. Captain Ruam was answering his incessant questions. He didn't mind. As a father of 37, he was quite used to it. Shobogoth. I have a question about a sentence I heard. Captain Ruam wasn't surprised. The Shogoth conversed with one another through telepathy and thus often had problems with metaphors or idioms. Let's hear it. Shobogoth. A fellow officer said, It's easier to ask for forgiveness than need to ask for permission. What does that mean? Captain Moram. Oh, that's simple. It means, um... The captain stopped once his brain caught up with what he'd just heard. Oh, um, who did you hear say that? Shamagoth. Human officer, chief engineer, Nelson... At this, all sound in the mess hall died down as everyone present stopped eating to listen intently to the conversation. The captain's security detail started checking their weapons, and some started stretching and limbering up. Shemogor noticed a worry in everyone's expression and moved to alleviate it. Shemogoth, there is no reason for unease. Human officer Nelson said he only wanted to relieve his boredom. As Shamagoth watched Captain Maroom yell, All weapons to maximum stun! to his security detail, as they ran to Depot 4, where Human Officer Nelson was doing infantry. He wondered if he had properly grasped the concept of the joke, as the Human Officer Nelson called it. Oh well, he'll ask him once he wakes up in the infirmary in a couple hours. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you